Thank you for tuning in. It's me, Brandy Brown, the creative director of Mars Wood Design here in Seattle, Washington. Today we're going to be doing a fun and festive backdrop. It's a DIY dip dye um, with yarn, a wooden stick, um, some rip dye, and some scissors. It's an easy step. We're going to make this beautiful backdrop, and as you can see, it's on a dial. Um, I'm going to be uploading a link to um, hgtv.com so you can see how we, um, how I made this, and you can follow along. I'm going to tune in. Please tell me where you're tuning in from today and say hello. Let's see. Here we go. Um, you know, I wanted to choose a festive fall palette uh, to create this backdrop. Now, you can make this as big or as small as you would like. Um, Hi, Patty. Thanks for tuning in. Um, you can make this as big or as small as you would like. Um, I did like a medium-sized one. Again, it's just on a dial. Some yarn, um, writ dye, and scissors. So let's get started. The first step, uh, what we're going to do is prepare your writ dye. So I grabbed a pink, um, an orange, and also a brown, which I'm not showing here, but you can see in my yarn um, that I have dyed these um, it's little variants of color. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So first, of course, we are not dyeing a shirt or a blanket. So we're just going to take our bulky yarn, and I used an acrylic blend, which worked really well for absorbing um, the dye. So let's just pretend I'm just using this white uh, yarn here. I would first take my first section, and I should probably be using some type of stir here, which I did not put on my table, but just imagine that I did. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll use these scissors, I've got two pair of those, but for some reason no stir, which is so interesting. Um, okay, so if you can see here, I'm just going to dip my yarn in the first color here. Okay, and I'm going to show you step by step. Please, this looks so dangerous, me poking this with scissors, but I promise I'm professional and I'll be okay. Um, but I suggest that you use, you can use a chopstick, a stir, uh, a straw, anything besides scissors, okay? This is a terrible demonstration. Okay, so next let's go, I'm going to pull my next color right over to this and I'm going to shove that into the next die also. And I'm just going to let it sit there and absorb. And already, if you could see this, if you could see in there, um, the color is already absorbing. It's already saturating. And so the way that I made this was to just line these colors up. And the other one, I had a third color. And so if this were a continuous thread, I would continue to dip my yarn in each color until I made a continuous uh, continuous thread. So from there, I'm just going to pull that into the uh, first color so that they're blending, okay? So let's set that aside because that was a mess. Let's set that aside, but if you can see there, I've got my strands going here and they are dying. Of course, you would want to uh, let them soak for, I mean, as dark as you want them. Uh, I only soaked them for a couple of minutes each and then did a rinse because I wanted to keep a really light pink to dark pink. So depending on what colors you want, uh, go ahead and leave the colors in longer or shorter depending on what you want. Of course, once it's done, you'll hang it, you'll pull it out. I like to rinse it just to give a little diluted, not so saturated look, uh, and then hang it to dry. This would be the next result of a dried strand that has been dip dyed. And you can see I've got some pinks and it fades right into that orange and then a lighter shade here. Okay, so this is all one continuous strand. So from there, we, I like to get started on my rod. So you can use a twig, you can use this stick, um, you can get these anywhere, the hardware store, the craft store, you can go outside and forage for a cool branch. Scour the beach for a piece of driftwood, anything that you want. Uh, the next, uh, what we're going to be using for this is a white twine. So if you can see this, it's a little thicker. Uh, this is about 
0 0.11 uh, inches, so it's not, it's fairly narrow, but not as thin as the thin cotton thread that we're going to be using to tie and make our tassel. So what we can do, I use about 50, uh, 35 or let's just start with about mm, 35 inches for this and you can measure as you see fit and go ahead and tie that first piece of strand onto your wooden pole here and I just did a knot. You can reinforce this knot with hot glue if you would like, if you feel it's going to be shredding. This is a pretty tough twine. So I just tied that first knot there and then I'm going to trim any excess. So if you can see I've got my first strand here. I'm going to continue. I would repeat that over and over as long or as short as you want. You can get very creative. You can combine two. Let's see. We can combine two twines. If you'd like, I'll show you an example of that also. But I just want to uh, make sure that that top knot is really secure. So the last thing you want to do is be making all these dip dyed tassels only for them to fall the next day or have someone walk by and it completely comes unraveled. So give it a really good tug there. And again, trim that excess. So then I've got my first two here. If you were really ambitious, you could do a tie here and have that repeating. But we're just going to show you something really simple, really easy, just to get you started. So from there, let's pretend I fast forwarded and I <laughs> strung all these strands like this, okay? Uh, the next part, which is really easy, you can use a wooden plank, you can use a uh, book. I like to use something around four inches just because I want to keep it clustered but also um, tight there. So you just take your never ending dip dye dry uh, yarn strand and I'm going to hold this at the base here just like this and then I'm just going to wrap. I wrapped it around about eight to ten times so two, three, I like to wrap it as long as I can see two colors or sometimes just a solid a transition. So you can see that I have a little transition from the orange to the pink there, which I think looks really cool. So let's just keep wrapping this and pretend this was 10, okay? <laughs> Since I've got this color here. So once I have this here, uh, I'm going to take my thin, my thin thread And I'm just going to take a little piece, about four inches, and I'm going to pinch this wad of yarn up so I can slide it right underneath. You can see that. And I'll be adding a tutorial on HGTV.com so you can see all of these fine steps. Let me pull this towards the center a little better so you can see, have a better, oh, a better viewpoint. I promise this is a really easy step. I'm just making it look complicated. <laughs> But thanks for tuning in. Let's see. Oh, hi. Yes. Uh, yes, this is a great craft to make. Hi, Carol. Thanks for tuning in. This is a super fun craft. You can make this. Um, you can customize the color for holidays, for baby showers, uh, for any holiday, really. So once I have, once I've slid this little thin cotton thread through the center, I'm just going to make one knot or I'm going to pull it and make a knot. You can reinforce this knot. Uh, it's okay. But we just want to make sure that it's taut and that it's secure. So once I have that, I'm able to just slide this off of my little plank and I'm using just a book that I have around the house and you can make it as long or as short as you would like. So once I have that, I'm at this stage and I've got two strands here. I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut that bottom and this is how we're going to make our tassel. Okay, and if you can see I've got tassels. My tassel is multicolored from our dip dyed strand here. I'll take another thin piece of cotton thread and I'm going to wrap it around this base here just like this. Just to pinch it to give it just a little head there. Okay. Let's get that off to the side. 
And I, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to tie a little knot around the base there just to give it a little head. They look like little angels when you're done with it, but it's really fun to mix and blend the different colors. So once I've secured that, I'm going to hold it like this, trim off the excess from that most recent, trim off the excess from that most recent knot, and there I've got my little tassel, okay? From there, I would hold my twine, and of course you'd want to make a bunch of these in all different colors, so you can play with different levels and different um, color combinations. I went from light to dark. Um, I just thought it gave it a really fun little bohemian feel, but also a fun and festive fall flavor also. So from there, you can start, you can start attaching your uh, tassel from the top, or you can attach it from the base here. So let's just go ahead and tie on right here. And I'm going to show you how it's so simple. I just take that extra thin thread that I have from the top and I just tie it around here, trim off the excess, and there is your first tassel for your backdrop. Now I'm not saying that this is, it's a simple craft but it does take some time to master um, the whole finished look. So if you can see that, there's my tassel hanging and I can put it at different levels. I'm gonna take this one down so you can see the final product. And you can see I've got all of these um, tassels on here. And I just took my thin twine and I just tied it on either side of my pole and made a real, it's so lightweight that you can really um, add this wherever you would like and there it is. It's just a simple and easy uh, DIY for a backdrop, but it's so fun. Customize it, do what colors you um, for your event and it's so great. Uh, hi Ruth, yes, you can do this to match your bedding. You can hang this in your restroom anywhere that you want to add a little life to a corner in your room or your home. Um, it also makes a great uh, event, event uh, backdrop. So again, thank you for tuning in. Ch be sure to check out my tutorial on HGTV.com and show me how you made your own DIY backdrop. I'll see you again next week. Bye.